Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Planet Tyro with your boy Donald Wonder and I'm here to do some movie talk for you. Now I want to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy but this isn't going to be a review. This is going to be like an editorial because after watching Guardians of the Galaxy you know it finally dawned on, it finally dawned on me and most of the public and Hollywood in total that superhero movies are now in the safe zone for good as far as I'm concerned. Now this movie's been established and has been the biggest financial success of 2014. So let me give you my thoughts on the movie itself first. Then I want to go into my little editorial because I've got some things I just want to put down on video. So first let's start with Guardians of the Galaxy. Again, this isn't going to be a traditional review. I'm not going to break it down like I usually do with my movie reviews because this is probably the most reviewed movie out there right now. So if you want something more constructive, go elsewhere. I'm just going to give you my raw thoughts and opinions. Let me start by what I thought coming in. Now, Guardians of the Galaxy, for Marvel, it seemed to me that they were so comfortable. Actually, I thought they were kind of arrogant that they felt comfortable enough to deviate from the well-established Marvel heroes to now to go into something somewhat obscure and has got a relatively small fan base. So when I saw the trailer and I saw the hit 80s music and I saw Chris Pratt acting all kind of, um, he was trying to be, he was being funny, but just came off kind of smug. And I just thought to myself, this whole movie's got this confidence, like it's all, you know, it's one. And I, don't, I didn't like that. How do you know this shit's going to be good? They all, for some reason, I felt this essence from this movie that it already felt like it, it had won. So, I was sceptical. On top of that, putting that aside, that prejudice aside, I just thought to myself, nobody knows the series. I, I, you know, I, I just didn't know if it was going to work or not. I just, but again, I held my reservations until the movie came out. Now, at this point, I just saw the movie a couple of days ago. The movie's been out for nearly two months already. It's been number one consistently. The praise has been unanimous for the most part. And most of my trusted friends have told me it was a good movie anyway. So I kind of already knew it couldn't be that bad. But again, had to see for myself. Let me start off by talking about the cast. Zoe Saldana, man, she was good in the movie. But her, her as an actress, I felt like she's been given a lot of chances, man. I've seen her in The Losers. I've seen her in... Um, so many action movies, you know, they're always picking her. I'm like, what's going on? Why are they always picking this one lady? What's that about? But anyway, putting that aside, she's fine. I thought she did well in the movie. Her character was fine. I think she was a good pick. She had good chemistry with the rest of the characters, such as let's talk about let's talk about the two non-physical actors, which is Rocket Raccoon and I am Groot. Now, Rocket Raccoon, that's all you heard about this movie. I mean. They're going to do a superhero movie about a fucking raccoon? How can you make that work? And obviously, I was sceptical too. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Bradley Cooper was great as Rocket Raccoon. His, the voice acting was fantastic. The character, lovable, funny, charismatic. Everything I heard, love Rocket Raccoon. Now, Groot. Let me touch on this. The thing with Groot is a lot of people are, oh, Vin Diesel got paid just to say three lines and all that. Yeah, and there's always nepotism in Hollywood, always picking stars to do movies that, you know, but listen, listen, listen. If the character's only going to do three words, you can't pick a no-name actor to do three words for the simple reason it's not a good idea from a promotional standpoint. If the character's, if you're going to get someone to do three words, then you might as well pick someone who's already doing good in Hollywood who's going to help promote the movie. Now, Vin Diesel's being loved for the Fast and Furious franchise right now. Any superstar that would help promote the movie for saying three words is the best pick. If they pick some no-name actor, that's not going to help. It's not going to help the movie. It might help that person's career, but it's strategically it's not a good idea. So, Groot was fine. I like Groot in the movie. I, I can't give Vin Diesel a lot of credit since he only did say three words, but he did those three words well. But watching Groot in the movie was a great character, a great sidekick to Rocket Raccoon. One of my favourite um, parts of the movie itself is when Groot grabbed these guys and swung them across the side, pa 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 pa, and he turned to the camera and smiled. That was fucking hilarious. So I love that. 
um, is it Dave Batista or Batista? I can't remember his name. He was like, I didn't even know he was a big part of the movie. He was like the fifth guardian. Fantastic character. Loved him. He, he you know, obviously he's going to be in the next movie as well. He feels that part of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Maybe he is. Maybe I just don't know the comic that well. But, but he was great. He was great. And obviously I've got to leave the main man for last, Chris Pat, a.k.a. Star-Lord. Again, when I saw him in the trailer, he was the one coming off smug with that comedy out oh, did, did i did was that a mistake give me my cassette player and all retro and kind of meta he was good he was good it was a lot more subtle than i thought it would be he wasn't in your face wisecracking all the goddamn time like i thought he would be he was subtle he was funny his little jabs here and there he just wasn't what i thought he was an earnest guy and his comedy he had those quips that i thought he would have but it was just played subtly and I just think he was, he was a good character overall. His backstory was pretty good. I didn't know this, but his backstory was really good. And I just want to say, I was going to touch on this later, but it was refreshing to come into a movie with no preconceived notions of how I think these characters should be. Like with Superman, this is how Superman should be. This is how Spider-Man should be. I didn't know these characters and they just won me over. Not knowing them, it, it, you know, it's good for one to watch a superhero movie where I had no preconceived notions. So, that just made things a little bit easier for me. But all the characters had a great chemistry. The soundtrack is awesome. They didn't just stick to that one album of that one guy I don't even know about off the top of my head. But they mix up with a lot of classic 80s tunes. Fantastic soundtrack. Fantastic sound effects. Probably... As well as the visual effects, which are also great. The visual effects were clean. The action sequence was good. The set pieces were good. The choreography was good. It was just a really visually enjoyable movie. But Marvel got that down now. But on the whole, the sound and visual together, just hand in hand, a great fit. Uh, Thanos looked good. First time seeing Thanos. I, I don't remember seeing him in any other Marvel movies. But yeah, I mean, and Rocket Raccoon and Groot, uh, visually, they looked great as well. Rocket Raccoon looked really, really good as well. So, props all around. Let's get to the story. The story was good. It wasn't convoluted. It wasn't too emotional. It was just a fun adventure ride. These, you know, just like Avengers, you've got these four characters that don't really get along in the beginning, but at the end they come together. So you've got that Avengers formula again. It worked there, so it works here. And I just, I thought the, the pace was good. I thought the elements worked well. The action was great. It was fun. It was funny. And the humour was, like I said, it was a little bit more mellow, but clever. Really great. I think they got the temperature right for the comedy. Uh, I have no complaints, man. Honestly, it's, it's such a laid-back, feel-good movie. I could watch it again just because it's exactly what it should be. It's not mind-blowing, but it's fun. It's adventurous. And it's just... The perfect superhero movie of the summer. So, um, my rating for Guns of Galaxy is a very high score to be, by the way. It's not a mo it's not about the story. It's just about the characters having fun and just being a great adventure. And it does that perfectly. I can understand why it's probably people's pick of the year. But for me, it still doesn't go up against, you know, uh, Days of Future Past or The Winter Soldier for me. Those have, those are just, those are done... Better just because they're well established and they did what they did. I'm going to talk about that later. But anyway, Guardians of the Galaxy, high solid B, really, very enjoyable and impressive to me. So now, let me get into the editorial about my thoughts on the superhero Hollywood era that has now been solidified with Marvel actually successfully creating a superhero franchise based off a non-established character set that's just not widely known to the public. People, I'll try not to make this long because the video is getting longer than I want it to be, but let me just say this. I'm looking back on the superhero genre in Hollywood right now, and I'm looking at the actors that are play, taking the roles in these movies now. I, in Guardians of the Galaxy, I saw Glenn Close now. Did you ever think Glenn Close would do a, a superhero movie? Sir Anthony Hopkins in 4. <laughs> now I'm hearing Michael Douglas is going to be an Ant-Man. I mean, we're at the point now... And with Guardians of the Galaxy being a non-established superhero franchise that has just been a complete success, the comic book superheroes are now 
for me in the safe zone permanently. DC, I mean Marvel, not DC. Marvel have shown it can be done. They can take any comic book character and make it great. And at the end of the day, you can take this. You can take Guardians as a standalone sci-fi flick without any backstory because I guess it works in that sense as well. But when I look at superhero, when I look at Hollywood with these superhero movies, so many the fanboys want to be. They want to be satisfied with you being faithful to the to the original material. That's where Man of Steel falls apart. Even though it was meant to be, a, you know, a different take on Superman, people hated it just because it was so different, so different than what we've seen before. But apart from that, I have to give, I have to mention that on when I watch Man of Steel again, I can see it's not a very good movie in a certain sense. So when I look at Batman v Superman. Um, it's not Ben Affleck for me that's going to be the problem. It's a rush. This movie was a, it's a rush job. I don't really have much faith for it to be honest because they've just rushed. They haven't done it properly. And this is the problem. When you've got comic book heroes, you either, I think you, you've got to appease the fans, the, the hardcore fans and the newcomers alike. But DC just seems to be playing catch up with Marvel. Instead of fixing what was wrong with Man of Steel in the sequel, they've now made a Justice League prequel. And again, Hollywood are just banking now on superhero movies. They've got their snatch up every comic they can. Marvel's doing that, you know, sequels and new new series. That's their thing now. DC don't know what the hell they're doing. And now the gates, the floodgates are open. And what you got to notice about Hollywood, the reason why I'm doing this editorial, is they're always taking established material and making it into movies. Like young adult books with the Hunger Games. Now we've got superhero comic books. Now they want to go to video games as well. I kind of wonder, is the days of true originality gone where you just wait, a, a, you know, a screenwriter just makes a movie just out of thin air? Or they just creatively write it with a director to write a movie? It's not a bad thing to write things off established, pre-established material. But like you said, you get fanboys and naysayers that want things done traditionally and want it to be done faithful to the adaptation and stuff like that. So... But, you know, I look at comic book heroes now and comic book stories and I just feel to myself that I don't know what's going to happen now because Guardians has hit that point now. It's just the floodgates are open and I don't think Marvel or DC are going to be the only ones. We've already seen other superhero movies like Super and Defendor and Kick-Ass and I think Guardians will open the floodgates even more. But, you know, I just wonder now what's going to happen with Hollywood now. Are we just going to keep getting this... Re- this repetitive superhero cycle because honestly it is starting to weigh on me a little bit even though i do enjoy the movies too much of anything's a bad thing and with any medium i like to see a little bit more creativity and you know i want to know what you guys think about this, this superhero thing because and let me just touch on one last thing before we wrap this up the thing with batman v superman what i think is going to happen is the movie will probably not do so well someone will the whole thing will be rebooted again. Someone will... All the complaints people had about Man of Steel and Superman not being done properly. Someone right now is probably writing a much better Superman story, the one everyone's going to love, who's going to come now five or six years down the future. And then we'll get the Superman story that we deserve, the Justice League story we deserve. But when you do a rush job on pre-established material like they're doing with Justice League or Batman v Superman, I don't know. I don't see how it's going to work. I'll be the first one that'll be shocked if this works out really well but uh yeah with all these shakespearean proper actors coming down to superhero movies now and the floodgates open it's going to be an interesting time in hollywood and there's always going to be other books and movies and video games movies adaptations and also we've got to think of things like battleship and the lego movie they're also taking just any franchise or any nostalgia shit they can take and make a movie out of it it's an interesting time for hollywood and I just sit back and uh, this is why I don't review these pop culture things so much because I don't feel it has a natural reason to exist most of the time. It seems like a lot of it is turning to business. But Marvel are showing that it can be done with heart and be entertaining. So let's see where it goes. That was a little bit of a ramble, people. And I know it might seem a bit like a pointless discussion, <laughs> but... It's just, I just wanted to dump my thoughts out on the whole thing because I haven't really spoken about it in video form yet. So that's it. People, thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below. 
if you missed the last vlog I did about the channel going on hiatus after this video, please click the, annot please click the annotation on the screen and that will explain everything. But if you're watching this video in the future and you don't know what I'm talking about, I guess there's nothing to worry about. I'm back to doing reviews at that point, so thanks for watching. <laughs> anyway, people, hit that like button. Let me know you enjoy the content. And this has been another episode of, man, eh, just a Planet Tyro video, I guess. Not, and not a Tyro media review, per se. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video, which will hopefully be really soon. Peace.